Hello, I'd like to talk about the borel contelli lemma and hopefully give a proof of this lemma. So the lemma says that if we have a collection of sets, uh, e each of the sets is measurable, otherwise you can't say much about them, and if their sum, the sum of all their measures is finite, then their limsup must have a measure zero. Now let me uh, remind you of what the limsup is. The limsup of a set or of a collection of sets is going to be, let me scroll over just a little bit, is a set of all x such that x is in infinitely many different uh, a sub k, so x is in a set infinitely many times. That, that's the limb sub, and we're going to show that that has measure zero. Now this result can sometimes be useful for proving things like convergence, especially convergence almost everywhere. For example, if we have a, a sequence of functions that, and we're trying to show that the sequence of functions f sub n converges to a function f, well then if we can show that for each uh, n, there's some sort of epsilon that we can put around f, and we can give, give it this epsilon such that the measure, and we let a, maybe let a sub n be x such that, um, the difference between f and f sub n is greater than wh whatever epsilon we've chosen. So, so f minus f sub n, of course x, f of x minus f sub n of x is greater than uh, epsilon sub n. And our, our epsilon sub n's are getting smaller and smaller. And if we can somehow manage to show that uh, the sum of all of these, uh, of the measures of all of these a sub n is finite, then that will give us the result that, um, that their limb sub is finite, which means the set of all x that is in these things infinitely often it has not only finite but has measure zero. So if, if x is not in these things infinitely often, then it's in them finitely often. And in particular, there's some n if, if x is not in the limb sub. There's some n such that eventually we're always going to be uh, f sub n is always going to be within this smaller epsilon, so it, it converges. Um, for, for that reason, so, it, so f sub n of x converges to x outside of a set of measure zero. And we can we can sometimes prove that with the borel cantelli lemma. If that doesn't make too much sense, that's all right. I, I'm not trying to actually do a proof with the borel cantelli lemma, just sort of trying to show one of its applications. Uh, it also has a lot of applications to probability, which is probably why my professor likes it so much. But let's go ahead and try to prove this theorem. It's not too hard. So let, uh, hold on, let, me, let me get a, a nice color here. So let a sub k be our collection. And let's see, how are we going to prove this? What we can do is we can let, we can define a new, uh, a new sequence of sets. We'll define e sub n. And e sub m will be the union from k equals 1 to infinity, actually from k equals m to infinity, of a sub k. So what that means is e sub m, let, let's say we're talking about e sub 30, or, or whatever. So the set of all x's that are in something, that are in some a sub k where k is bigger than 30, bigger than or equal to 30. So e sub 30 is uh, going to be bigger than e sub 35, which is going to be bigger than e sub 100, because it might be in something bigger than 30, but it's not in something bigger than 100. Maybe it's in 75, and then it stops. Whatever. So, so let's take, um, so, so th this is a, a decreasing uh, sequence of sets, meaning each set is contained in the previous one. So e sub m is contained in, oops, that, that was contained e sub m is contained in e sub m minus 1, and contains e sub m plus 1, and so we have this, this decreasing sequence of sets, each of which contains the previous one, and notice also that e sub 1 is finite. The reason e sub 1 is finite is because the union of a sub k is, that the measure of the union of a sub k is going to be less than or equal to, let me write this down, so e sub 1, that's finite measure. Where, where is my, okay, there I am. 
e sub 1 is less than infinity because the measure of e sub 1 is the measure of, let me just write out the definition, the measure of the union from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, which we have shown by subadditivity is less than or equal to the, or sigma subadditivity, the countable subadditivity, is less than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the measure of a sub k. And we've assumed in our hypothesis that that is less than infinity. So the measure of e sub 1 is less than infinity, meaning we can use continuity from below. So, so this tells us that the uh, continuity from, or sorry, continuity from above tells us that the measure of the intersection from m equals 1 to infinity of e sub m by continuity from below is equal to the uh, limit as m approaches infinity of the measure of e sub m. Now, I claim that this must be zero. So, so this, this limit must be zero because the measure of e sub m as m goes to infinity, remember, as m goes to infinity, we, uh, where we're summing all of these up and we get something less than infinity. If something goes to infinity and its sum is less than infinity, then the individual terms must go to zero. Otherwise, we would, they would be bounded by something uh, positive and we'd add up a bunch of positive things and get something infinite. Or some, a, a bunch of things that are bounded from below, that is, and get something infinite, right? So they have to go to zero. These, these terms then, these, these measure of e sub m, must go to zero and then go to infinity. So that thing right there is zero. That's by continuity from below, from above. Okay, but then what is this right here? The measure of the intersection from m equals 1 to infinity of e sub m is the measure of the intersection from m equals 1 to infinity of the union from k equals 1 to m. No, 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 no. Union from k equals m to infinity of e sub k, right? And this set right here is what is that? Well, I claim that it's the lim sub of a sub k, because, or actually, e, e sub m is the union, I wrote that down a little bit incorrectly, e sub m is the union from k equals 1 to m, uh, from k equals m to infinity of a sub k. There we go. So this is the lim sub of a sub k. And why is that true? Well, if x is in this set here, then it's going to be in the union from k equals m to infinity, no matter what m is. Meaning, it's going to be in some a sub k bigger than m, no matter what m is. Well, if no matter what m is, it's in some k, a sub k where k is bigger than that, then if you take m equals a million, it's in a sub a million and five, or whatever. If you take m is a billion, it's in a sub a billion and six. And you keep going. No matter how high you get, it's always going to be in one bigger than that. You take the next one, it'll be in one again. So it's going to be in a sub k infinitely many times. So we have one direction of inclusion, right? To get the other direction, we just need to show that if it is in a sub k infinitely many times, then if uh, then certainly this is going to be true as well, because if it's in a sub k infinitely many times, then no matter what m is it's going to be in the union from k equals m to infinity. If it, if it stops at m, then it's then it can't be in there infinitely many times. It has to keep being in there, no matter what m is. So that's how we get our equality. In fact, these two sets are are the same sets. They're, they're really defined almost the same way. Just one is in terms of uh, unions and, and intersections. So they're, they're different ways of looking at the same thing. All right, so that's the borel Contelli lemma. Well, that's all I'm going to do for this video. Just a uh, quick proof, and that was relatively painless.